Teen Vogue likes to flatter itself by referring to itself as a fashion magazine for teenagers. Instead, for many years now, it's been encouraging teenage people to engage in various different degenerate sex acts. Now, they've reached sort of a new low. In a recent article they published titled, and I kid you not, How to Hex the Patriarchy, a Spell for Reproductive Justice. Yeah, that's where we are. For those who managed to go this far in life without knowing what a hex is, good for you, I'm so sorry to ruin it, but a hex is a spell or a curse that's aimed at somebody. It's, you know, it's a spell that's in engaged by someone who is immersed in the occult. Over the years of my life, every once in a while, there's been an atheist who has pointed at the vices of Christians by saying, but what about those witch trials? And here I sit, just kind of thinking, well, I feel sorry for the falsely accused, we can go with that. But with the modern ones, we don't even have to see if they float. Because they're busy writing articles for your teenagers to read about how to, you know, engage in witchcraft so as to make sure that the flow of dead babies doesn't slow down. So there is that. You know, they're pretty public at this point. They're the ones who scream, we love killing babies at pro-abortion protests at this point. <laughs> kind of interesting where we've come. I would say how far we've come, but really I'm not going to imply that there's some sort of progress in the fact that these people now feel comfortable coming, coming out into the public arena as they do. So let's take a look at this article because I don't think you'll believe me unless you see it for yourself, all right? So here we are. How to how to hex the patriarchy. And as you can see, really, this is Teen Vogue, a spell for reproductive justice. And it starts, throughout history, witches have fought back against the patriarchy. And that's, that's rather an interesting point, actually, because yes, they kind of have fought back against men in every regard, because these people are fundamentally opposed to God the Father, because that's a masculine, and these people have daddy issues from hell. I mean, and the pun there is awesome. It's just like pretty literal, you know, these people have daddy issues from hell. So anyway, yeah, so there is that. I actually have no argument with this statement. And then as we go down, it says, in the late 1960s, the movement group, Women's International Terrorist Conspiracy from Hell, also known by the, the friendly acronym WITCH, organized protests to push back against the patriarchy and to fight for women's rights. They had these spin-off covens throughout the country, composed of radical feminists who wanted to expose capitalism as the true enemy of women's freedom. Now there's... that's quite the onion, because I'm not really sure that any economic theory is the enemy of women's freedom, but certainly not capitalism, because if we might be honest here, um, women are far more consumeristic than men on average. So there is that. I mean, unless you want to take the stuff away from this woman and she would then be happy without the uh, innovations that have been made possible through capitalism. I just don't think that that's particularly likely. I think it's more likely that instead she's willing to shout from her coven about all the things that she actually holds dear but pretends that she doesn't because men, men are bad and that's where we are because, again, Daddy issues, we've been over this. So, it's strange. We sit here in a time where witches write articles to teenagers, encouraging them to use occultist practices in service of the killing of the un unborn. And it's just, it's very difficult to even know what to say because we've, we've, we've fallen so far. All right, anyway, let's go back to this article for a minute. Because I want to go down, and they, they explain how witch, this terrorist body, threw pills at male panel members who were speaking for women about what they could or couldn't do with their bodies. And here we go again with this same tired argument. I don't believe there's ever been a case in which anyone has, you know, argued that these that women shouldn't be able to take pills to, you know, eradicate their cancers, for example. You know, that, that they shouldn't be able to take the pills that would affect their bodies. There's nobody doing that. That's very much a false argument. The question is whether or not they should have the legal and moral right to kill somebody else's body. Right? And, and it's really important that we... I mean, 
I've said it over and over, but I'm willing to say it as many times as necessary, that the child's body is not her body. It is distinct and has its own value independent of her, and that is why she does not have a right to kill it, because that child inconven inconveniences her, right? So there aren't a bunch of men saying what she can and ca cannot do with her body. There are a bunch of men and women, because the pro-life movement is split roughly 50-50, it's actually kind of amazing, um, that say that you can't actually kill the children that you consider to be an inconvenience. That's what's really going on. And just to finish up over here, because like, we're not going to read all of this article because there's only so much that you need and it can take. Hexing is a choice that the magic worker can make for themselves. There is no right or wrong when it comes to fighting back against the injustices of society. Well, that's an interesting sentence, isn't it? I can understand why someone who's engaged in and immersed within the occult would say there is no right or wrong. Because to them, perhaps, there isn't. To her, perhaps, there isn't. But to the rest of us, there are absolute rights and absolute wrongs. And I think perhaps this is one of the areas that we distinguish ourselves from people like her. That we have an objective source of morality, God, um, and from him, we get this sense of what is right and what is wrong, and we don't just say everything's a shade of grey, because it's not. There are absolute truths. And fighting back against the injustices of society, it's not an injustice to protect the unborn. Right? That's actually a good thing. But again, this is somebody who doesn't recognize right from wrong and thinks that there is no right from wrong when it comes to defending the right to kill children, which is the appropriate interpretation of that sentence, because that's what she actually means by fighting the injustices of society. She means there is no limit to how immoral you can be in order to defend this practice of, of widespread abortion. And as we go down, she's actually giving, you know, spell instructions here, a teen vogue, you know, with the frankincense and the charcoal. Yeah, we're not going to go through it all. And then calls it a prayer and says, this prayer is an, invoca is an invocation of Selene, the personification of the moon in ancient Greek cosmology. Notice how she is repeatedly invoked as a protector of children, the goddess of midwives, and a terrible foe of e evildoers, a subduer of subduers. Okay. Now there's a certain amount of cognitive dissonance here that has to take place for a person who is trying so hard to defend the trail of blood that follows abortionists by invoking what it thinks is some kind of protector of children. I mean, again, I kind of find myself at a loss for words because I'm not exactly sure how to fight an argument that's quite as incongruent as that. Um, I have no fondness for ancient Greek mythology or for its different gods or for Selene or any of this. Obviously, I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic. However, the person who wrote this article, presumably, if we are to expect that it told the truth for a minute, believes that this figure is a protector of children and then said, you know what, that's the one that we're going to call on to kind of help us to kill more children. D do you see the problem here? Yeah, uh, she doesn't, apparently. And the, the author of the article, Lisa Stardust, which I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's not her real name, has other great articles for you, like How to Haunt Your Ex, because, you know, she's such a bastion of morality, and really, is there really a right and wrong? Yeah, this is occultist mindset here, or even if you want to get all the, all the way down to it, the Queer Love Match Guide by Zodiac Sign. So there is that too, um, depending again on, is there a right and wrong? Yeah, not to these people. But again, the, what disturbs me here is that they're not even writing this for some leftist cesspit out, outfit like you might normally expect, something like Salon or BuzzFeed News, um, I could go on, but rather for Teen Vogue. So they're 
trying to get teenagers to dabble in the occult, and that has real consequences. Seriously, if you're watching this, don't ever, like, dabble in that stuff. There really are dangers to doing so. Um, I think that there's... We, we're in a time where we're so accepting of everything, so unwilling to say there's an absolute right and an absolute wrong, that we end up, if you accept that kind of um, laissez-faire freedom that has no like basis in what is good for people, you end up just accepting everything. You end up saying, well, you know, they're all just shades of grey. And this is kind of a consequence of a culture that refuses nowadays to speak up for what is right. That I think that there's sort of a an anarchistic thread in our society that says, well, we should just kind of accept everything and not be too judgy. And there's a consequence to that. And the consequence has an impact upon children who are too young to be to know what they're being exposed to. Do what you can to protect your kids from, from garbage like this. You made it to the end. You either really liked or really hated that video. Let's assume you liked it. There are a lots more that you can choose from, and also you can follow me on Gab and various other social media sites. And if you are able to support the channel, that's an option for you too. There are links in the description below. Thank you so much.